In this presentation, we're going to discuss about processes in Windows. So what are the design goals behind the existence of the entity processing Windows operating system? First and foremost, multitasking. So multitasking is implemented behind the scenes using process. It behaves like a home for a reasonably isolated programming problem. Like editing text, like notepad.exe is a process. Winword.exe is a process. Why do we need a different processes in Windows? Same reason as most of us need a different house to live. Privacy, some space of your own. Avoid using and destroying stuff of other people or other threads or threads running in other processes. So I'm continuing in the analogy of a house and a process a house has a rooms like a bedroom kitchen etc the process has something called a virtual address space which is the most important aspect of a process a virtual address space is what is defining the boundary of a process like the boundary of a house it is more of like a universe for a program this has nothing to do with the memory. Memory is totally different. It is just a space or the theoretical maximum memory a program can access at a time. So this has nothing to do with actual RAM or page file or anything like that. So this is the a limit or the boundary. Virtual art space is all about boundary. The next most important possibly which normally a process has is thread. So thread, we're gonna see the details later, is like a human being who is living inside the house who actually does things. While process is just like a boundary or a space, more or less. Threads actually does things. What the threads doing? It depends on the third most important thing a process has which is the loaded binaries or programs if you will so you can think of it like stuffs in the house which people living in the house uses next is something called handles it's very difficult to continue this analogy of houses with handles but handles are like keys for a car so the car is normally outside the house but the key is inside the house which is needed for operating the car a different computing resources like files networking sockets mutex semaphore all the operating system common resources are accessed through handles in a processing windows operating system we'll see the details later another thing is something called a security token which decides what privilege the inhabitants of the process mainly has a different process has different privileges i have taken here the example of white house here the single most important place where the president of united states works so the inhabitants of that particular house has more privilege than outsiders like that there are system processes processes in which threads are running with administrator privileges it is the security token which decides that privileges the last thing I would like to discuss here is a memory allocation. So different types of memory allocation like a rooms inside a house, heap, stack, raw virtual memory, reserved memory, etc. Now how to create a process? It's very simple and I'm sure that you have already done it. You can just double click on a notepad icon or any, any programs icon. A process is always created. 
In most cases, a process is always created by another process. For example, when you double click on a notepad, a process of notepad.exe is created by explorer.exe, which is handling that double click which you are doing. So it is the explorer which is creating the notepad, which is the shell itself. So, in fact, more than often, when you double click on a picture, text, document, anything like that, you are indirectly creating a process of that application which opens a file. The very application in which you are watching this presentation is a process as well. Of course, you can create your own process like a Hello World application using Visual Studio or any compiler which works on Windows. So, when a process is destroyed, similarly, a house is destroyed, it can be from the people living in the house. They see that they have to build a new house or something like that. They can demolish the old one. That is what we called graceful termination. We are done with the house, we are going to demolish it. Sometimes, on the other hand, the house is uh, wrongly built or some other reason, outsiders can come and terminate it as well. That is what we call forceful termination. So there are two ways a process exit. One is by itself and from outside. What a process does, just like a house, process doesn't do anything. It is always, it depends on the people who is living inside the house and the stuffs inside the house, which is the DLR or the EXE. Let's see a demo of different processes using Task Manager and Process Explorer. To start the task manager of the system, you can right click on the task bar in the explorer like this and start task manager. Another way to do is press control shift escape. So these are the different processes running in the system at the moment. So you can Click this button, show process from all users, so that I can see the system processes as well. So you can go to view and select columns. So you can select more columns to see what are the other things or the stuffs which this process has. I have started an application called Process Explorer from Sys Internals. So this is a fairly advanced tool which helps you to understand the internals of a process. So this is the hierarchy of the process creation, this tree. For example, sumit.exe has started sumit64.exe. So we can see the child-parent relationship here. Again, similar to the task manager, you can see the different counters the paid CPU, etc. Just like that, you can select more counters here. So, Process Explorer has so many counters. View, lower pane view, DLLs. So, in this case, you can see that what are the different DLLs dotted into the particular process. So, these are the DLLs. If you need to see the handle, you can see the handles. So these are the different handles. So if you double click on a process in Process Explorer, you can see more details. Disk, CPU, it's very detailed. Even you can see the threads which are running inside the process. So this particular process has two threads. And this is what this thread trying to do. So we have seen this demo. You see in Task Manager and Process Explorer to see the processes running on this computer at the moment. So just to clear up some of the jargons we normally hear task application program process. Task task is one term which we hear all the time. As a matter of fact, task doesn't mean much in Windows. Whenever someone says something like task, it's better to get clarified what they are talking about. Same with application and program. It's not a well defined term. Application can mean practically anything. One process, 
one DLL which is loaded into a process. Say for example, a browser plugin. Browser plugin is an application but not a process. Program, same, same scenario. It's not defined. It can be a Hello World program. It can be a plugin. It can be a process. It can be multiple different process. For example, Chrome or even Firefox more than often creates more than one process. So uh, these terms, a task application program, they are not very well defined. So it is it is better to get clarified when someone talks about these three terms or more terms, anything other than process threads. So process is a very well defined term. We are trying to define process in this presentation throughout. So that brings us to the summary of the presentation. So process, it's a more or less a boundary of a piece of code which is trying to execute in Windows operating system. As a matter of fact, most of the things we have discussed is common for Linux or any modern operating system for that matter. The purpose of the process is to isolate program from one another and accomplish multitasking. Also, we have seen related entities which a process can possess like threads, tokens, handles, memory allocations, etc. That's about the presentation. Now, reviews, comments and suggestions I would like to take from one single location. So if you don't mind, I would like to follow this particular pattern for the reviews and comments. Unfortunately, it is not really useful to me if you update the YouTube comments as YouTube is just one way we publish content. Now, if you think you need more personal attention or have some in-depth doubt or need some more training, please feel free to follow these links. Also, please refer someone if you think they can benefit from similar trainings. All services are available online as well as direct classroom training. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.